thank God that the brother's on the rise now. Endless celebrations all in my house. Levitating now, I'm super duper fly now. What's up, guys, and welcome to FBL Today. I'm the man in the know, JNO, and welcome to another episode and another series on the channel where we look at the fixtures short and long term for the up and coming game weeks and try and pick out the informed players with the good fixtures so we can move up those FPL ranks. But before we get into this video, I do just want to shout out a new sponsor for the channel. Sponsor for this video is OneFootball. OneFootball is a free app on both Android and iOS devices. I'm excited to have OneFootball on board as a sponsor as I absolutely love this app. Both as a fantasy football player and a football fan, it has so much of what I need in one place. Push notifications for goals scored in the Premier League, as well as news from around the footballing world so I can keep up to date with the January transfer window and the summer transfer window. Also, it lets me stay up to date with the good old Don's AFC Wimbledon. So as a football fan and a fantasy football player, it has everything I need. So if you want to download the app and you want to support this channel, please check out the links in the description down below for One Football, and thank you to them for sponsoring this video. So let's get into this video then, shall we? And let's actually have a look at the fixtures first before we start trying to pick out some players. Right now, the top five for good fixtures in the next three are Aston Villa, Chelsea, Sheffield United, Manchester United and Everton. Aston Villa, Chelsea and Manchester United are the ones that stand out to me here because they also have good fixtures in the next six. Although if you want to take advantage of Sheffield United's good fixtures, they do have Aston Villa, Brighton Hove Albion and Watford in the next three. Potentially you could look at their defence to pick up you some clean sheet points. And also there are some options in attack, however, for me, with Lundstrom in the side and the fact that the strikers seem to rotate at the moment, I'm not too sure who I would go with as far as a Sheffield United attacking option. But as far as Aston Villa, Chelsea and Manchester United, I'm definitely interested in all three. The reason for that is they do also feature in the top five for the next six fixtures from game week 17 onwards, with Crystal Palace and Bournemouth also joining them. Now with Crystal Palace, there's a lot of talk about potentially taking the punt on Wilfred Zaha, and there's other options there like Ayu and Patrick Van Aanholt, but for me, there just doesn't seem enough about that Palace side for me to really want to jump on board, although I am a big fan of Wilfred Zaha when he is on form. For those of you that heard me on FPL Surgery, you know I wrote the book on Zaha, but I'm just not too keen to revisit that story. Bournemouth as well, right now they aren't really getting the attacking returns we expect from a free-flowing Bournemouth side. They have also seemingly become a bit more defensively solid, so right now they seem in a transition, but it does look good for me with the likes of Rico on my bench. However, this series is going to be focused around Aston Villa, Chelsea and Manchester United, as they have Manchester United with Everton, Watford, Newcastle, Burnley, Arsenal and Norwich in the next six. And Chelsea with Bournemouth, Tottenham, Southampton, Arsenal, Brighton, Hove Albion and Burnley. And then finally Aston Villa with Sheffield United, Southampton, Norwich, Watford, Burnley and Man City. Now yes, there are some tough fixtures for all three of those in that run of six. But the likes of Aston Villa really are interesting because they aren't necessarily a team that rotate their players too often. So we'll start off with Aston Villa and the players I'm considering looking at. Stats-wise, McGinn is the one that stands out in the last two game weeks. He's only got four points, which is less than the other player I'm looking at. But underlying stats actually show a lot of chances created by McGinn. The rest of his stats are pretty poor to be fair, but six chances created with four shots on target. We know he is capable of getting shots on goal and those late runs into the box. So McGinn would be someone I'd be looking at just based purely off of the stats because the others aren't necessarily appearing in the stats tables that highly. But the player I like from the eye test and the player that I've wanted to bring to my side for a while now and is my favourite option into this Aston Villa side is actually Jack Grealish. 11 points, which is of course a lot better than McGinn's four. He's had one goal, no assist. Shots on goal, he's had three, with all three being from inside the box. Only one shot on target, however, but it was a big chance, which he did miss. So the goal he scored wasn't a big chance. He's also created two chances, with both of those chances being shots on target. So Grealish would be my way into that side with those up-and-coming fixtures. It's a bit of a shame that it is tail-ended with Man City, but there isn't any team that really have no tough opposition in the next six. We then move on to Manchester United and with again Everton, Watford, Newcastle, Burnley, Arsenal, Norwich in the next six. That's a good run of fixtures. The issue with Manchester United of course is you never know which Manchester United you're going to get. They also seem to up their game more against big opposition than they do against teams that will sit back and park the bus. However, Marcus Rashford has looked on fire recently. 18 points, 2 goals, 1 assist. Eight shots on goal, six from inside the box, four on target, 
three big chances, one of which he scored, and one chance created, which was a shot on target. For me right now, he is a player that just looks on fire. And hopefully if he keeps that up over the Christmas period, it could be a big difference to my FPL rank. He's also passing the eye test. He's getting chances from inside the box, outside the box. He's doing well with those chances as well, really testing the goalkeeper. So for me, Marcus Rashford is my preferred way into that side. You could look at some other players. There is Daniel James, who does seem to be nailed on there in that Manchester United side as well. Martial is a bit of an injury risk over a very busy fixture period. And defensively, I don't really like Manchester United defensively. I do still think they will continue to concede goals. So for me, Rashford is the man at Manchester United right now. And then finally, we have Chelsea with Bournemouth, Tottenham, Southampton, Arsenal, Brighton, Hove Albion and Burnley in the next six. Now, for me personally, there is quite a few options in this side. Tammy Abraham is, of course, one that I already have in my side. And with that fixture list, I'm tempted to keep him, although... There was the issues with game week 18 with Tottenham as their opposition, which I was concerned about because a lot of my players have tough fixtures in that period. And I also have Liverpool players that won't actually be featuring. Other than that, Chelsea have the fixture run to consider to keep them in my sight. There's also Willian that has come to the forefront. Reese James also looks like a potentially good option. You've got Tomori as a budget way into the defence, although he hasn't played recently. But for me, Pulisic and Mount seem to be the big argument right now in the community. Pulisic, only four points in the last two game weeks. No goals or assists, but ten shots on goal. Nine from inside the box. Only one on target, which is worrying. Two big chances. Of course, he didn't score either of them. And he's created four chances, three of which have resulted in a shot on target. Now I'm hoping this is just a bad run of two games for Pulisic because I was the guy that came out after his perfect hat-trick and said I was a bit worried that that hat-trick was fortunate. I've now brought him in because he continued to score and now it could be a dry patch which would be really annoying for me. Meanwhile Mount has just scored in a previous game week with Mount getting eight points in the last two game weeks at the time of recording this with one goal, zero assists, eight shots on goal, four from inside the box, three on target, no big chances which means he scored with no big chances and Pulisic hasn't scored with two big chances and two chances created, one of which resulted in a shot on target. However, for me, Mount and Pulisic, both rotation risk. The whole Chelsea side, potentially a rotation risk. So we'll see what happens with that Chelsea side, but there is definitely the fixtures there to take advantage of them. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. As always, a new series on the channel. Hopefully it will give you more helpful advice going into the Christmas period, which is going to be an absolutely hectic one. And then, of course, we've got the January transfer window. We also have the possibility of double game week starting and us looking into those. So going to be a hectic, hectic December and January on this channel. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, and also hit that like button, share the content out, help support the channel. And also go check out OneFootball, the app, in the link in the description. It's your guys' support that's helped me get these sponsors, which of course helps the channel out massively. So thank you to you guys. With all that being said, I've been JNO. This has been FPL Today. And remember, it's all about the game.